First trials, we got quarterfinal number three coming up. It's going to be Strife Crow versus Ostkaka. Uh, should be a pretty interesting game. Um, are the players bringing the same classes to this? Is that right? Let me uh, verify here with my handy dandy cast. Druid Rogue notes. Shaman versus Druid Shaman Rogue. Well, the same classes in different orders. Um, I remember Strifecrow had a few twists to his decks. Um, was it him that had Tuskar Totemix in the Shaman deck? So was many Shamans it? and so many Druids, I can't I can't <clears throat> keep track of all of these. Tuskar Totemic was Oskako's uh, aggro Shaman. I mean, I, oh, we saw Tuskar Totemic in Super JJ's, but uh, yeah. you know, it was pretty it was pretty interesting to see him adapt when you can't really put crackles in your deck and he seemed to have taken a more board centric approach Tuskar totemic isn't exactly like on paper a blatant ag aggressive card but it does seize the board early on which is something that uh you, you you want to do the only problem is that the criticism against Tuskar totemic for a long time is that it has a hard time fitting in with the rest of the deck if you have so many small yeah. overload so like you play totem golem you can't play Tuskar totemic the following turn uh it, one of those jokes is like, well, if you want to play Totem Golem, just play Tuskar Totemic, and then you'll get yeah. Totem Golem. So it's, it's all these different dynamics of stuff, because the variance is pretty high on it. That's right, that's right. And um, Tuskar Totemic might have uh, a very interesting implication when the standard format does actually come out. Uh, you know, if you think about it, um, you do drop a Totem that is not particularly desirable most of the time, like Vitality Totem. If you're playing Tuskar Totemic, you're usually... Uh, wanting to have the highest chance possible for totems that affect the board immediately. So um, that coupled with, with with possibly we'll see a few more totems implemented in the game. Um, I wonder if if eventually we're going to look at this card and see it like Bane of Doom. I mean, I, I, I think there's some chance that we're going to have like, you know, Totem Colossus come down. It's like oh going to be God. like a seven mana totem that you could get off of... Uh, Right. Uh, Tuskar Totemic. I mean, that that's kind of what makes Bane of Doom so cool. There's there's like all the garbage, but you know, there's there's all these like absurdly broken cards that you can get, and uh, I wouldn't be too surprised to see uh, more of that. Regardless, no, uh, I agree. None of I that agree. today. <laughs> it's one of those uh, interesting design spaces where it's like, well, I guess for the next year, Blizzard's not going to print any like. You know, Totem Reaver, where it's like a four mana seven seven that like Battle Cried make your deck useless like usual. So it's because then the Tusk Card Totemic can summon and end the game. Uh, but yeah, I agree. I think Bane of Doom is pretty interesting because it's like the card itself is pretty weak, like two damage for five mana. But mm -hmm. sometimes you get Illidan or Draxus or uh, even Mal'Ganis in the, in the most crazy scenarios. Truly, truly going to be a wild thing to experience as time goes on. Mm -hmm. Um, in the meantime, though, uh, we're, we're, I, I think the variations within these decks uh, will just be very small and nuanced. I think one of them, the, the one thing that I picked up that we haven't really discussed much is that it seems like there aren't actually any chargers in these rogue decks that run the Cold Bloods. Cold Bloods is just uh, for burn, like in a way. It's, it's like you tag it on to a minion that already is going to be doing damage to the face anyways and gives you some extra range on that. To end the game quickly with auctioneer, if you need, we've seen that um, you know you want you don't want to just drop cold blood because it ruins the balance of useful cards and uh, perpetual draw mechanics with auctioneer. Um, so like if you take out cold blood, you have to put in like sinister strike or something, and is you really want to do that. And if you put sinister strike, you might as well go for like the Mali Ghost build, and that just changes the identity of your deck um, yeah. because cold blood is is. It, it lasts for more than one turn. Sinister Strike is just a guaranteed three plus damage with spell damage, but um, you know, Cold Blood can hit twice over, especially if you have two conceals. So it makes sense given the game plan for Oskaka. We saw Amnesiac do the same with his build and uh, a few other people as well. Um, meanwhile, I think Strifeco took more of like an oil centric approach, oil rogue approach, but without the actual oils. It seemed like it had the two teachers um, and a couple of other interesting replacements uh with some cards but you usually double up right a lot of cards within rogue are are debatable for the second copy you don't really necessarily need a second farseer these days you don't necessarily need yeah, the do. second fan <laughs> fan of knives um, i like i like two of both of those cards man i love <laughs> it i love the farseer i love the fan of knives um 
I think they work pretty well in, in the tournament I, I format agree. so far. I, I like them. But uh, you, you can expect, I think Strifeker runs the sprints, right? He, he does the sprints and the, I guess. Yeah. Is it is it Strife Crow with the sprints? I know one of the rogue players is just running straight up sprints and no auctioneers. I always do. Well, I guess we'll find out very quickly. <laughs> yeah. Assuming we can get to that point, already some things happening here in the in the mulligan screen, which you guys can see in just a sec. Uh, the first is that Strife is on the coin, extra card, but he already has early game plays. And one thing you don't want to be doing is just stuck hero powering over and over until it turns four or five uh, if you're Oskaka. So he's definitely going to probably hard mulligan a lot of this in order to try and get early game plays like SI7 agent, backstab, tomb pillager. Yeah, even even Blood Mage. Uh, Blood Mage is all right against some of the other decks because it's, uh, it's a little bit of a speed bump. Uh, like against some of the aggressive decks, it's going to trade with something most of the time. But against the rogue, because so frequently you dagger up on turn two, uh, if you're playing Blood Mage Thalmos instead of daggering, you're just you're giving your opponent a one mana tempo, and that can mean a pretty big deal. Yeah, it's a great point. Um, the Thalmos doesn't actually do much at all, um, but looks like Oskar could choose to keep the Gadget Sand Auctioneer in the opening hand. That's an interesting choice. You have any opinions on that, Crip? Um, yeah, he's probably thinking that if he's going to win a game, he needs to have uh, a Gadgetson, and it, because he's going first, it's it's pretty unlikely to actually draw into a Gadgetson, um, you know, by the time that he needs it. Uh, so okay, sure. Uh, I mean, I'm I'm going to trust his uh, I'm going to trust these players' opinions on those, these decisions over my own easily, right? So I mean, I I may have not done that, but um, so I'm going to safely say that. Uh, Oskaka is making this play with confidence uh, based on results that are significant. Right, so uh, just for confirmation, Strifecrow is the guy with the sprints in his deck. He's got that mm -hmm. Assassin's Blade for huge burst and uh, I believe the South Sea Deckhand. So those are the ways you can really outfit your deck. Um, although you still are going to be missing a lot of the usual suspects. The heal bots, the Belcher... The pilot shredder, even the boom. Uh, I definitely think that's more of Strife Crow style. Mm -hmm. He's he's got some plays. I think daggering up here is perfectly fine. You've got so many opportunities with the Violet Teacher. With now that you have coin, prep, backstabs, like you have so many ways to make Violet Teacher very good next turn. I don't think you need to overextend here. Yeah, um, we're gonna see probably an, just a SI being dropped, uh, putting this down the, the first minion this. on the board. Uh, tends to have uh, some nice advantages. Well, it's not going to be a very good ending for Oskaka on turn three here because we see by the teacher backstabs is still available to it. However, Strefko also has option of taking it even slower, saving the coin and using the Farseer instead. But I, I still think the, no, I the teacher like is the better option by a big margin. Yeah. Yeah, the teacher is also nice because uh, those one ones uh, gradually become threats, and if your opponent has to use his weapon on that, that's you know more and more more tempo that you're pushing ahead. Yep. So even though the one one's not terribly impressive, it's just another thing that has to be dealt with because it's very annoying. And speaking of annoying, Oskaka can't get the value he's looking for. So no. Mm. This is an interesting thing, though. I'm noticing that the conceal is showing up as green, mm. which means uh, apparently you can conceal nothing uh, in order to combo another card. I didn't know that was the case. That actually makes conceal a little bit better than what I thought it did. Yeah, it, it could be at worst just an empty spell to start the combo activators. Mm -hmm. <sighs> Shiv's the teacher in case he gets eviscerate. Yeah. It doesn't, so he's going to kill the 1 1 and re dagger. Ouch. Look at that Farseer putting in some work. Once again, you're going to put it outside of the eviscerate range and make it slightly annoying for his opponent. Oh, I. Oh, you, oh, you, oh it's a press sprint, sprint, sprint as well. Yeah. Yeah, it's, yeah. It's too clean. Like, if you play a minion, you might be just playing into a board clear anyway. 
uh, the prep sprint. Mm -hmm. It's always like um, when you're kind of ahead already and your opponent is playing a combo deck, you don't know what they have, the best way to get ahead is to just draw as many cards as possible. Yeah, you know, it's one of the, it's it's uh I, I ignored that sprint for a while, but on turn four, you're absolutely right. That's what you want to be able to do when you have a board initiative. Plus you get two tokens from it too. So uh you know again the tokens aren't the most impactful thing, especially not in the rogue mirror where you can just see a bunch of fan of knives and flurries come out. But um every small little advantage really starts tilting in your favor when the more you're able to get value out of it. Mm -hmm. I mean, you can just see that Oskaka is like forced to play in an uncomfortable yeah, way. Like he'd rather play Azure Break this turn. He'd rather not have to dump his Blade Flurry like this. But because the teacher continues to threat with so many spells waiting, it's just one of those really annoying things that you have to take care of. I think I'm um, I'm pretty happy with that line of play. Um, it gives him a clear. The board clears whatever. Oskaka is going to have to win this game by drawing most of his deck through Auctioneer anyway. So. I don't see it as a huge disadvantage. My eyes are open. This right to clear. Um, Pretty feels impressive. like. Yeah, it's it's. I mean, there's another way that he could have, but I think he just wants to save the South Sea for yeah. something else. I was originally thinking two maybe villager two South villager Sea. South yeah. sea. Yeah. I was thinking the same. Mm. And then next turn he has like. You know, Assassin's Blade with Deadly Poison, just like start going ham. But well, I guess I think, that. I think the idea behind his play is his opponent is really struggling to remove minions, and he might be saving like a Sap. So Sap is very poor on Farseer, but very good on Tomb Pillager. It's a great point. Farseer is a card you're more than happy to get sapped mo normally um, if because you can get more use out of it. Now, I wonder if Strife Crow is just going to go all in here with the Assassin's Blade. He can push for 8 damage. That is a lot. It's a lot with mm. more from the hand. He's got at least 6 more damage from the hand. Um, so he'll have 11 yeah, he's got the spell damage eviscerate with the charger if he needs. Oh right, that's uh, that's an extra point. So twelve damage. All right. Which would be a little bit short still, but I mean that's an intimidating weapon to go through. Plus, now when you play auctioneer and stealth, is there any guarantee that it, your your gadget's hand will stay alive? It could just get flurried. I mm. It doesn't matter though. I mean, you have to go for this play, no matter what. Definitely agree. I, I don't think you have a choice, but it's one of those things that um, you wish you didn't see that right before you played. Okay, well, you could load up the board. Um, you can also try to draw a little bit with the Thanos. Or sorry, with the Fan of Knives. You don't have to drop Thanos, but it gives you some spell power. So many um, options. If you want to be aggressive with eviscerates, I just don't think um, the the gadgets and being at two or three health actually matters. Thank you. Okay. Looks like he he's just playing the the Thalos to load up board, maybe get another draw next turn. But yeah, it, it didn't seem like there was much point in the fan there. Yeah, I think the draw was the most was the important key here for Strife Crow because he says, you know what, I don't actually have game ending damage. Uh, I'm gonna go very much on the offensive and see if my opponent can stop it. Mm -hmm. All right, well, Skaka has a lot of actions to to make. He uh, ideally would want to close out the game this turn. Uh, he hasn't really used much in terms of uh, damage. Uh, it's just he's going to be limited on mana. And wow, the first two spells uh, producing two minion draws. Just horrible, horrible luck here. Uh, the Deadly Poison is a lot better. But can you go for that right now? Yeah, you can get a flurry with it. You he can. still has one more flurry in the deck, I assume. But even though you, you don't have the oils, but it's it's you still run two. Oh, if you play the deadly poison, you um you can't play the farce here. Yeah, that's a good point. Conceal again and leaving it up to whatever his opponent has. 
All right, well, that looks like it. Looks like Strifecore just has it. The one Eviscerate should close this game up. Oh, style points. Fam knives. All right, not really much style there. There's nothing left you can really do. <laughs> Everything else is just occupied, so. Looks like uh, game number one in the book, Strife Crow off to a very quick lead mm -hmm. as the Rogue deck gives him a slightly a big, uh, advan a bigger advantage in the series. You, you know, we mentioned that the Gadget Sand versions are just a little bit slower than the tempo oriented ones around Violet Teachers. Mm -hmm. So uh, I think it was really good display right there to just showcase exactly what we're talking about. Uh, your turn or two is behind what you need to be. I feel like Oskaka's decks are overall just a bit slower versions than Strife Crows. Strife Crows running the Violet Teacher Druid, which can produce a board much faster than the traditional Druid. He's got the Shaman that's more traditional for this tournament. It doesn't have the Tuscar Totemics or the Hex, I believe. And the, the Rogue as well. So typically, I think when, when it comes to mid-range or fast decks, the faster deck has a small edge over the slower deck. And I think that's, uh, that's actually... Uh, reversed when it comes to the slower control decks, but um, I don't think these decks qualify for that. It's an interesting observation. Um, it's only, it, it kind of doesn't really matter too much how fast it is when it's um, when, when you're not when you're playing like opposite matchups like Druid versus Shaman, but when you're playing Mirrors, it definitely is very noticeable how fast mm -hmm. the deck is comparatively. Druid starts off with the Innervate and Living Roots and a Keeper of a Grow. That's a really good opening hand for Oskaka. Yeah, I kind of feel, like, feel like this is over already for the Shaman. Uh, you have to draw so well. I mean, uh, the Shaman still has the Mulligan, but um, you have to draw so well to beat this. The turn one Keeper possibility followed by a Living Roots possibility. Or, it, it, I mean, it depends on what threats come out. He might mix and match his, his plays based off of what he sees. Oh, man. Arcane Golem. I think you guessed this on the first day. I think you guessed that Strifecore might be running the the full six three-drop degenerate team. Yeah. The, <laughs> the, the double Arcane up, Golem. <laughs> Basically, go, to go full face hunter, for lack of a better term. Uh, yeah. Face hunter just plays all those chargers, <laughs> every single one of them. And of well, course, there's also the uh, unwanted cousin of the three of the of the uh, the terrible trio of chargers. Of course, being the Nomergon infantry. Well, that's when you know you've gone too far, Crip. I mean, that card works pretty well with uh, Crazed Alchemist. That's four charge damage. You don't even give your opponent a mana crystal. Oh, my God. Yeah. I guess you're right. Oh, <laughs> well, the Savage Combatant is a big problem here. Yeah. Every, I mean, it's just eight damage that's capable of coming out every time you hero power. And you can start hero powering every turn. Because you're not going to be doing much in the early stages. Tunnel Trog is not a good sign either. Yeah. Now you have to Leper Gnome here. Two Arcane Golems. Oh my god. That's a surprise. It is, but you know the, the reason why you want to play a lot of these chargers is because you want to—they're they're high tempo, plus they're just a lot of damage that you can rack up quickly, and it's additional range that people don't really account for. You can imagine that arcane golem is like a four, a three mana spell that does four damage. Not necessarily that it's a minion that has charge, because uh, a lot of times you're expecting just to hit once with it. I really feel like if you're playing like six chargers, you should be playing flame tongue totems as well. Because if you have two minions and you have a flame tongue, that's four. But if you have a charger as well, that's six. That's the damage efficiency is is through the th through the roof. Like that's as good as it gets. It's still only six chargers though, and flame tongue ultimately still doesn't synergize that well with the rest of the twenty plus cards of the deck. So mm -hmm. it could be one of those things where Shrifer doesn't feel compelled to. But you could be right. Again, these are the first iterations of the decks that these players felt like were the best. And, I mean, if you give them another week or so, maybe they would have figured out Flame Tongue Totem would have been good, for example. Man, this is so much damage. <laughs> Strife is dead in two turns to the board. 
It's 15 damage just by hero powering and attacking. Yeah. What is with these double combatants, man? Hey, who gets Shredder? The combatants and how weak it was to Shredder, but they kind of forgot about, uh, yeah, what happens if you can get out proactively with an Innervate. Mm -hmm. Thank God. I think he has the Arcane Golem one down. And then play a Tunnel Frog? Mm, yeah, I guess. Ugh. Help your opponent ramp. Oh, man. We're pissed. Wild growth. Thank you. <laughs> we are so pissed if we're in Camp Strife Grow. And Oskaka, we are jumping for joy. Being able to take out the Tunnel Trog. Um, you can do it in, in a variety of ways. You can even silence it and push face, too. I think I like the silence because the Savage Roar lets you push for so much what more damage. See, if you hit him to 19 with the Savage Combatant, You'll have 7 plus 6 is 13, plus the hero power, 16. So not quite enough, but getting very close. Mm. What if you hit face? No, it's plus end? 2. It's it's 19. No, it's, it's 18. It's one off lethal. Alright. Okay. So, next turn, the maximum damage he has is, I guess, is the Savage Roar Hero Power, which is 5 plus 4 plus 3. Well, not enough. Oh man, this is just too clean. Too fresh and too clean. It is ridiculous. Plus Hero Power. Now Shaman's overloaded. Just putting on to display why Overload was often a criticized uh, mm -hmm. mechanic because while some of these cards are fantastic, the moment you get behind, uh, you're just gonna, it's just a snowball effect. You're just never gonna climb ahead in mana usage again, and Druid's the one that benefits from grabbing a lot of proactive tempo with mana. So, uh, I'm not sure. Alright, well, Arcane Golem's gonna swing at face here. We're getting closer. I mean, those Savage Combatants were dealt with that, uh, that taunt wall really uh, helped uh, Strife Crow uh, just prolong his stay in this game. Yeah, he does have Doom Hammer with Rock Biter. And we could pick up another Rock Biter as time goes on. But he yeah. is potentially dead. He's facing lethal here, and that's going to be it. I mean, there's. There's no case for clearing minions here. And you just lose the Savage Roar itself. Not even the greatest choices either. Life tap is not what you want when you're like mm -hmm. really far behind on board and you have no life remaining. They might just use any savage or force nature to kill you. I think if but, you life tap into a lava burst, you don't die. You're like one off. But I mean, where are you then? In the following turn. Even further behind. That's, mm -hmm. that's part of the logic. All right, well, here comes Savage Roar. No oh, man, that's gonna be With 16 damage, nature. I believe. Oh, the Force Signature. <laughs> there it is. So, game two going to Oskak, and we have a tied series. Really starting to uh, heat up a little bit, but again, relatively tame games overall. It's like one player getting a very strong lead and never really relinquishing it. So. Yeah, yeah. Well, well, I'm really curious how the Shamans would match up against each other. Um... But I feel like the, the the shamans have been bullying the rogues so far. Um, I think the very few times the rogues have beat the shamans has just been on the back of some crazy burst draws. Uh, and in general, the rogues just doesn't have enough time. So depending on the next matchup, we might not get to see the shaman mirror. Well, yeah. That, I mean, that's not necessarily something that... I, I'm too sad about just because I think the Shaman Mirrors are, while they're very fast, uh, some of them are a little bit like, like, like too. It's it's just like too dependent on if you have early game plays and you just get blown out. But um, I'm not sure. I mean, if they have the elemental destructions, those are always very dynamic with how you actually play. Um, and, and of course, the Rogue is always an interesting matchup against Shaman as well because I like seeing how Rogue stays off aggro. It's always one of those. Uh, 
It's kind of like watching those survival movies, like Starship Troopers or something. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I will. I will make the prediction. Need more that backstabs I, now. I don't think either Shaman deck has Elemental Destruction. I don't think you'd play Hex if you had Elemental Destruction, and I don't think yeah. you'd play Six Chargers if you had Elemental Destruction. It's a great point. The Elemental Destruction slot seems to have been filled by some of those other cards. Trevco is on Druid this time, and we're going to flip the classes. Oskaka on the Shaman. Mm-hmm. Um, yet again, the Druid seems to have the edge in the, in the opening hands, but uh, they have not been mulliganed yet. Uh, this could drastically change. I would assume that he wants to return the favor of um, dropping that Keep of the Grove or Living Roots very early on, and then... Oskaka is just going to want a one-drop of any sort. And if you knew there's an opponent's hand, you'd probably want... Well, you always want Tone Trog, but you also just want more resilient minions and not ones that just get dunked by Keeper of the Grove, for example. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, that is a pretty damn good start from the, uh, from the Shaman. It is no Tunnel Trog opener, but I think this is uh, second best here. Yeah, Sir Finley McMurgleton, similar stats, get you a hero power. What hero power will it get? Um, Is it yeah, always the, the hunter? Yeah. We've seen a lot of hunters in this tournament, yeah. as it turns out. A lot of hunters, a lot of life taps. And, and actually, I kind of want to see it, because I feel like we're in that funny scenario where it happens to be life tap, fire blast, and steady shot again. I just want to see it. Oh, okay. Looks like Serene it's a Searing Force. Totem. Searing Totem every turn. Yeah, he kept the go. Shaman Hero Power, Crip. <laughs> well, no, it's much better because you can get a Searing Totem when you already have a Searing Totem. It's true. You know, it's it's like those... Uh, yeah, have you ever played Just Car True Heart and Shaman? Uh, no, but I've had it played against me and the guy played like four Taunt Totems in a row. Yeah, it's awesome. <laughs> You get to choose which totem, totem and uh, you get to have multiple copies of it. Mm -hmm. Oh, no, I didn't get Pretty four funny. totems. The guy played four spell damage totems in a row and just crushed me with, like, crappy spells. <laughs> Build your own Malagos. So funny. What to do? Ten mana later and five turns, it's like you're able to uh, finally get to Malagos' level. <laughs> All right. Well, what is the play here? Um, the, the juggler is obviously uh, the explosive one. I kind of like the juggler uh, just because playing it after turn four uh, always gives you that uneasy feeling of it getting keepered. And playing it into three mana is probably the best chance you're going to get. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm inclined to agree. But, I mean, I don't mind the totem golem as well. All right. Just stats. This does it, lock you in, though. Yeah. I'm trying to see what this interview changes, but... <sighs> it really doesn't change anything. Yeah. No, you can't really put out a 5-mana minion. Uh, Living Roots and Keeper doesn't do much. You can kill off the 3-4. That's about it. Oh, yeah, you can kill off the 3-4 with uh, Keeper and Living Roots. I must take mm -hmm. All right. Well, the um, the juggler is uh, still going to be an unfortunate play here, but um, yeah, again, I think you just gotta go for it. It must be very depressing to play the shaman deck. <laughs> yeah, because just because the overload again, what, you would not be as upset if you had the opportunity to use three mana this turn, play something, but Skaka Hero Powers, my god. That's how much he doesn't really want to play Night Juggler into the other Keeper that go. Yeah, he's probably thinking of doing um, the Charger and the Leper Gnome next turn. He's going to follow with Knife Juggler, um, Feral Spirits to try to get uh, as, much, as much mileage out of the Juggler as possible. Hex. And that's a pretty good card because, I mean, 
He Osaka actually has a pretty good minion base. He's got minions for this turn and the next all throughout. That's a good point. It's true. Strifeguard doesn't have anything to play next turn except for Savage Roar uh, for now. So uh, inevitably, when he finds out his opponent doesn't drop anything significant, the Hex is going to land on a pretty big minion. Yeah. Right now, it would be landing on Thorson, for example. I mean, you have to evaluate, like, okay, um, what if Strife Crow plays this minion next turn? Is my board going to be too weak to get past it, or am I going to be in a good position where Hex is really good? Uh, if he doesn't do anything, what's the best case scenario that I can exploit it? He's mostly thinking if he wants to trade. Um, the thing is, Swipe doesn't really punish that hard because the uh, Feral Spirits work so well um, against uh, against the two-attack minion like the uh, Keeper of the Grove here. Yeah, good point. Second Keeper... Uh, Gotta do it. Gotta do it. You use it for damage? Yeah, I think you use it for damage on the 2-1, then you kill the 1-1. Um, both these players in this in this match are just you know desperately scrambling to get the most you know garbage on the board as fast as possible. So there there is no saving. There's there's no viability of waiting in any turn. There might be a case for attacking into the keeper here though to kill off the two two, um, just to ensure that some of the some of the taunt minions will survive and protect the juggler. Well, uh, there's still that Knife Juggler and Feral Spirits play, so I'm feeling it. The more I look at it, Oskaka is still going to weigh all of his options. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I don't really know too much outside of what he wants to do um, with that. Uh, is there another play that we're not seeing right now that Oskaka's weighing? Mm -hmm. uh, no, I don't think so. The, the decision was really whether he wants to kill off the 2-2 the minion or not. Um, and I think um, the way that he's been playing, uh, trying to invest as much as possible into the juggler, um, is, is consistent with this line of play. Um, well, here actually a Savage Roar is not too bad. Uh, Savage Roar lets you clear everything but the 2-1 minion. Yeah, um, you're going to want to... Kill off the knife juggler as well with the living roots. Yep. So I, I think it's okay. Just because what you really want to do is just to stop taking damage and then be able to flip the switch. I guess you don't really feel happy using the savage war now, but um, hmm. gotta, you gotta pick what you gotta pick up whatever win you can on the board here because there's just too much damage represented by you being passive. Yeah, yeah. I mean, if if you're gonna take like ten damage from a wave of minion hits. There's there's almost no chance you're gonna come back and win this game. That's a good point. So here we go, living roots. On the keeper uh, <clears throat> by the keeper onto the uh, onto the knife juggler and that's just burned. There's no minions, there's no doom hammer. Well, Lava Shock is pretty decent though. Helps him get more mileage out of the two one. Mm -hmm. It's still a pretty long way to go, but uh, this deck can do it. Ooh, that is an outstanding draw. Man, would you go for that or would you go for Emperor Thorson? Uh, I think I'd like going for the Druid of the Claw. Where Druid of the Claw lets you speak to the hero power, so that's ultimately why I feel like I lean towards it. There's some some cause to kill the one one here. Well, uh, definitely see a hex here though. Uh, you have to save all the damage you possibly can. It's not worth lava bursting. I think this this is going to be a pretty easy play. It's going to be um, a juggler hex, dude. The juggle doesn't really matter where it goes. You're going you're gonna to end up doing one damage. I guess the debate is what do you want to use. Uh, to remove the Druid of the Claw. I mean, one of those things that you have to account for, what if he has Ancient of War? Do I want to save Hex for that? Do I want to use Lava Burst now? Um, all, all valid questions when you have to account for everything. You think, 
What did Strife go play in the previous games I saw him play? Did he ever play Ancient of War? If so, what's the likelihood he has it? And beyond that, you know, if can I win if I don't do that? Kind of well, hard I, to value all these things. I think the 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 point is that he's evaluating if he had Ancient of War. Oh. Okay. Well, it looks like he left it up to chance. With that sequencing, it seems like he was willing to lava burst if the juggle had landed. But my my thinking was that um, you have to weigh in the option because he played Druid, Druid of the Claw on 7 mana with a hero power. But wouldn't an Ancient of War represent a, a bigger wall against that? So it seems unlikely that he would have uh, an Ancient of War. That's why I think Hex is, is just uh, the better play. Yeah, I think if he had that, he had 7 mana, it would be the better minion. Drew the Claw still has application as th the game goes on. Um, Ancient of War, you want to get down earlier so you can control it. So I, I agree. I think you can make that assessment going for it, and that's why Hex might be the better move. I think I would just go all out face with minions here. Don't worry, loves. The cavalry's here. Yeah, this is certainly interesting on how the juggle lands and hits the face. He only wants face juggles, I believe. Uh, okay. So, Savage Runner number two pick gets picked up. This is really tough. I think you have to heal yourself. Why can't you play Snarius? Hmm. Think, yeah. I think if you play Snarius, it's actually okay. What to mm -hmm. do? Um, in the sense that. You know, you, you know your opponent has to get through it like through all these small little taunts. And if you play Ancient of Lore, it's less stats and you're only gaining plus one health net. I guess you hero power, so it's the same. But then Ancient of Lore gets more flexibility because it's reduced one more mana. Ah, yeah, no, it's close. I I think you swayed me with the Scenarius play. I think I like Scenarius. But it looks like uh Stripe is gonna play as safe as possible. Well, right now, he doesn't look like there's lethal just yet. We're waiting to see if there's another Lava Burst or some kind of thing to really add to the damage it's points. four damage that he needs. Uh, no. no. But you could consider a board clear here just to protect your Tunnel Trog. Man, yeah, I, I like the board clear option just because I want Tunnel Trog to be doing damage. Unfortunately, I won't be expecting the Scenarius, though, to stop the Tunnel Trog in its tracks. Well, Scenarius comes down. Actually, they, they get through the taunts immediately. So even that is not too bad. Really, the nightmare scenario is swipe. If you play the Tunnel Trog and clear the board with spells, if your opponent has a swipe, it's going to be very difficult to find the remainder of that damage. No, that's a good point. That's Kaka roping again. Trying to come down to what decision he wants to do here. Okay, looks like he ends up using a lava burst to clear. Okay, he goes for the tray instead of uh, the lava shock. Oh, okay. man. Okay. What a draw. Is that better than Scenarius, though? Scenarius splits the damage. Ancient of War focuses on it. Scenarius is better better against things like Earthshock. And Hex. Because you can't really do it, but... Mm. I think the Ancient of War is pretty... Too good because I think your opponent would have spent time removing a lot of your other talents, so you know that the last card is an Earth Shock, and I think mm -hmm. you need to get value off of that Ancient of War. 
Yeah, Ancient of War has more complete stopping power. Time waits for no one. The payout is higher. Okay, here we go. Well, uh, I like it. Ancient of War comes down and... You didn't really set up this big wall. You need Earthshock in order to shut it down. Doom Hammer Oh, that's gonna do. Yeah, that's really nice. It's gonna buff the uh, the Tunnel Shrog by two and does actually offer a board clear here. Uh, and Oskaka has the health to work with. It's really striped when it doesn't have the health. Yeah, what do you even do if you're... Um, I guess... <laughs> I guess you just go ahead and and kill it off and then try to take the damage. I think it's better to keep the divine shield. The divine shield will lead to more overall damage. Oh man, take ten. Yep. All right. Is it time to play scenarios now? Has he waited long enough, Crip? Well, the scenarios actually really blows against Doomhammer. Doomhammer yeah, just it just happens to be convenient for the two hits. Yeah. I guess it stops one of the rock biter charges. Hmm, I wonder. But you know, if if you don't do this, how do you actually um how do you actually survive potentially? I think you have to play with some of those. No, this is gonna work uh well to stop a rock biter, I guess. Yeah, uh four damage. Man, that, if he had the hunter hero power, Drew would be dead by now. Yeah, Drew would be the dead. Paladin's just doing a little bit of damage, inch by inch. And uh, I do want to mention that a force of nature would be lethal here. Yep, Strife Go is on a draw to win. And it's a cheaper Savage War. I, I don't know if that actually makes a difference. No. He would have. Um, I find. He would have 22 damage total. Ooh, that's not going to fly. He's got a draw. Oh, man. Uh, how many swipes does he use by now? He just needs one, like, a point of damage or taunt. Doesn't get it, though. That's it. He dies to the board right now. Six, seven... Yep. Nine. Yeah, I guess that's it. You know, the Paladin Hero power just is a little bit enough. It's, at least it wasn't like Priest or Warrior or Life Tap. Or Shaman. Or Shaman. Shaman would not have done like almost anything. The worst. That's kind of what Finley is, though. Finley is just literally like improving the worst possible scenario, which is often the starting hero power for like those aggro warriors and for the Shamans. All right, game three in the books. Didn't even need that lava burst to wrap nope. it up, and you know this one was a little bit slower paced. A lot of thinking back and forth, especially in Oskaka's end. Absolutely, and uh, Oskaka goes from a one-zero deficit to a two-one lead right now. He is on uh, on match point, and uh, he has got his rogue, the deck that he's been putting off uh, so far. Now I think the rogue will get obliterated by this shaman, but I feel like Strife Crow's Druid is exactly what the rogue hopes to play against it, it has a few extra slow cards that are just like you know absolute yeah. sap victims For yeah <laughs> but we'll see like oskaka goes for um you know again that like ability to race with the cold bloods and that gives him huge potential to swing the game we've seen him two turns lethal from 30 right it was the 12 12 Van Cleave and then uh, a cold blooded Drake or something like that. And it was like 20 damage plus the Eviscerate and Blood um, Blade Fury. So uh, that was one of the things that really put him over the edge against in that mirror matchup of Rogues. Um, the good opening start for uh, Strife Crow, getting those one drops, but he definitely wants a little bit more to follow it up. It's an argument to keep Doomhammer sometimes because you really just want that damage anyways, especially against a class that takes damage with when you play Lepernome, they have to use their own health as a resource. Yeah. So you can definitely best Strife goes thinking, do I keep Doomhammer? He throws away no. Lepernome! Whoa, yeah, he, he's like going he's just, all in on the trog. Yeah, he's trying to get uh, as many overload cards as possible to make this thing work. Well he's definitely, definitely satisfied that. 
Now, the rogue can kill the trog with a backstab, but he's going to have to coin a hero power as well, which I don't think he'd, he's really willing to do. Oh, certainly not now. That is the dream, Van Cleef. That is backstab prep fan coin Cleef. That's the dream. Oh my god, he's going to get destroyed. He's going to be on one mana next turn. Yeah. This Van Cleef is going to annihilate him. Well, uh, there's still that possibility of Earthshock, but I think you do go for it. I was, I, I was thinking if there's any need to like do any of the play, but I think you're absolutely right. That's going to be a 8-8 eight, eight or 10-10. Ten, ten. It's a 10-10, ten, 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 it looks like. That's a three-turn Van Cleef kill if you can't stop it. Sean's oh, on oh. one mana, though. <laughs> can't Earthshock. do anything this turn. No, it's got Earthshock. Watch. Crypt, do you believe? Ah, uh, no. Oh. Uh oh. Well, uh, Sir, Sir Finley, you have quite the adventure on your hands. Those hero powers are horrible. The three worst. It's going to try to outheal the, the Van Cleef. Yeah. I mean, Thanos is a card draw, which is something that you're definitely interested in because you dumped so much of your hand into this play. Okay, uh, you know, the Feral Spirits can stall for time. A little bit. Um, he's saved his Thalnos and Blade Flurry, so um, he, he, can, he can clear the board, uh, oh, except for the, the remainder of the Finley. I wonder. But I think Strifker is going to wait on that play. I think he's going to try to juggle it out, I believe. Yeah, I think... Um... I think the, the Feral Spirit still is his best chance to survive. I don't know if he can take another 10 hit to the face. That's just asking for Rogue to finish you off in top deck mode. And if you Feral Spirit, that you have three mana remaining the following turn. Argent Horse Rider uh, is follow. I don't know. I don't, I don't really like any of these plays besides the Feral Spirits. Yeah. Well, he's basically got a minion on the opposite side of the board that has a zero on top of the stats of your board. Like one magnitude higher. Oh, and a prep. Does that help? Mm, I don't believe it does. Not unless you want to develop the tomb pillager, Thank you. Um, like in in flurry. But uh, that's pretty much the only way you can use the prep. Is that, well, a, that, that, that that's a clear on the Van Cleef? I think right. Can you use it? You can earth shock. Oh, uh, sorry, not earth shock. Lava shock, and then. Use the abusive sergeant. <laughs> you know, That's like a lot of resources. Abusive. Hmm. What to do? I guess you would um, lightning bolt first, then lava shock. Yeah. So you can get the maximum um, mana. And then you can, I think you can just use Argent Horse Rider. Or no, you only have two more mana rending. Apologies. Then. Oh. Can't oh my! Wait, what? He he fished for an earth shock, <laughs> I think. Oh, I see. yeah. And it's like if I don't, I just kill this. Next turn, he'll have two man to lava shock, anyways. And he's saying, uh, "I really hope you don't have a way to get past this taunt." Well, he does. He does. Very much so. And that coin makes it so he can actually conceal the Van Cleef. Oh my god, you're right. Coin, coin Conceal. Wow. I mean, this is kind of what we're talking about. The fact that you have Conceals in your deck and you have big buffs gives you the opportunity to go all in on huge boards. And Shrife goes dead. There's actually no way you can come back from this. Even Elemental Destruction won't save you now. That's going to wrap it up. Oskaka's aggressive shift onto the road uh, ends up winning him a game by turn six. I mean... The, the previous game that we watched went so much longer. It was like such a slow deck. That ag that Shaman deck was more like the control, and that Rogue was more mm -hmm. like the aggro, <laughs> based off how it played. Well, the uh, the super uh, Sax Van Cleef, uh, you know, claims another victim, and that victim is is Strife Crow. Uh, 
it's awesome when it happens, though. Uh, there's usually uh, a bit of planning, and uh, it is a rare enough occurrence that uh, it is amazing each time it does actually occur. Uh, coming World up, though, we got... stays alive. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. We got, yeah. Uh, we got the G2 Bros coming up. It's going to be uh, Tice versus Life Coach. Uh, same lineup, practice partners, I think same cards in every single deck. Who's your favorite? <laughs> Uh, you know, I think this might be a battle of uh, not only wits, but also fatigue. It's starting to get pretty late in the hours of Europe, uh, mm. 10 p.m. But, you know, some of these guys, they, they, they are gamers, so they really understand how to stay up late. Uh, although Life Coach does have, you know, a family, some, you know, two children. Probably has to consider, you know, not staying up too, too late doing mm. some of these moves. But I think at the same time, he's definitely got an opportunity to rebound. If there's anybody that has momentum, it's Life Coach. He's been on the brink twice of losing and then be able to come back strong and go through without an actual series loss. Mm -hmm. uh, good stuff overall. That's going to be coming up for you guys right after this commercial break. We want to give a shout out to our sponsors as well. Geek Fuel, the Curse Network, Hearthpone, and the Innkeeper.com. Uh, helps you sort all of your card collection stuff if you're trying to build the decks. Informs you on what you're missing. Uh, when we come back, our last quarterfinal before we start coming down to the, the wire of who's going to be the Curse Trials champion. Uh, don't go anywhere. We'll be right back. <laughs> 